Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode. Welcome back for another episode. If you've watched some of my videos before, thanks very much for tuning in again. If you haven't seen me before, my name's Kurt. I'm a really keen Spearo based here in Mackay. I document all my spearing trips. Mackay's got some amazing diving on the coast, on the headlands, out at the reef, the islands. We've got islands everywhere out there. We've got so many cool spots to dive and I really enjoy bringing the underwater world up, putting it on the tally so everyone can check it out. All right, so it's about 4,000 degrees in the shed today. So I'm gonna keep this intro pretty short, pretty sweet. So this particular trip was diving out of my recently rebuilt Haynes Hunter. If you're keen to see some more footage, some more info about that Haynes Hunter, I'll put a link in the description for the full playlist. I did a four video series just on the rebuild of the Haynes Hunter, as well as that all previous episodes. Previous to those four episodes, we've got little snippets and info and updates on the Haynes as I was rebuilding it over the last few years. So yeah, like I said, first trip on the coast in Haynes. Conditions weren't great. It was probably a meter, meter and a half swell. The wind had really come up overnight. You know, it's always good to have two in the water. There was only two of us on the boat, so the plan was to anchor the boat in some sheltered water and just dive where we could, swim up to the pressure points. And you can see when we go to the underwater footage that there was a lot of particles and I think it's a bit of algae getting around in the water and that swell was knocking everything off the rocks. I think we got the last of the little bit of viz that we had, but we had pretty good viz really for where we were. Now what was cool about this day is I got a new species for me. So I guess it's a PB. Speared two of these fish and I've eaten both of them raw completely, the whole fish, just absolutely delicious. Righto guys, it's getting way too hot in this shed. Let's cut to the footage and I'll catch us back in here after. Righto guys, we're putting the boat in. Less than ideal conditions today. You can probably hear the wind in the GoPro. Yesterday it was reasonably calm. The viz shouldn't be too bad. Tides aren't absolutely huge yet. They're building, but they're not massive. So I think there's about four meters of run today. It's just gone past high tide now. This is my first dive in the Haines since the Cluffy Challenge. So it'll be good to get it out, play the cobwebs out. It's been sitting out for about a month or so now. Yeah, just cruise around, see what we can find. See you out on the water. Now in the words of Aaron Young from Key West Waterman, welcome back underwater everybody. A little side note too, if you haven't checked his channel out, check it out, some awesome footage from diving over in the States there, uh, over in Key West. Now like what I was saying, the viz wasn't the best, I mean it wasn't that bad really, Ben down at about 10, 11 metres there, you can clearly see him laying on the bottom, but what you won't see and what you will definitely swim over is good fish. So it pays to get down to the bottom, sit down there, have a bit of a look around and just see what you can find, like I normally say. So this was like the second or third dive of the day. Headed down, I saw this bit of an undercut on the side of this little bommy here. Thought maybe there's a chance of a crayfish in there. There was nothing in there. Looked around to my left and spotted this guy. Now this is a very typical size coral trout for the coast here in Mackay. It measured around that 48, 50 centimetre mark. And with the visibility like what it was on this day, you're never going to see that fish swimming from the surface. You need to get down there and have a good look around. Now as always, every fish is brain spiked and bled. Even if I stone a fish, I still brain spike it. It still seems to have some sort of effect on the fish. And you see that guy didn't do a good job brain spiking, so I pulled him back out and did it again. So like what I mentioned earlier, the conditions weren't great. We had to anchor the boat in sheltered water and that means that we're not where we really want to be. We're not on that pressure point, we're not where all the bait's congregating. So we had to work that little bit harder to find fish. And what that also meant was maybe taking a species that I hadn't taken before. So you can hear me doing a little bit of grunting there. Now a few species that love that grunting, or a lot of species love that grunting or any sort of subtle noise like that. Definitely pelagic fish, so you will see trevally, queenfish, mackerel, stuff like that come into that sort of grunting. Tuskies love it. These guys love it, these painted sweet lip. They're a sucker for it. They'll come in for a bit of a look. And pretty well did this for just about every dive on this day. Lay down on the bottom, bit of grunting, bit of scratching. You can't sort of hear it there, but I'm constantly just scratching with my fingers. And this guy comes in for a look. 
Now I notice him and straight up there, I see Ben on the surface and I think I'm gonna have to wait to take this shot. I don't want anything bad to happen out here today. So I wait to take that shot and it's probably lucky that we had that little bit of viz and I could actually see Ben on the surface there because if it had been a little bit dirtier, I wouldn't have even noticed him. So the fish promptly wraps me around that bommy there. Luckily Ben spotted it all and heads over and puts a second shot in. Now this is definitely by no means a trophy fish, but as I was going to find out, it's going to be a fish that I really enjoy and I'll definitely, definitely take plenty more of them when I see them. Big bathroom mirror. Really? <laughs> you said before you hadn't shaved. Yeah. Just do it in that. <laughs> Use that. Quite bright. The colours have all changed, eh? Yeah, it didn't have any yellow when you oh. first got it. Tastes good? I've heard they are. Now as you can see here, the viz definitely took a turn for the worse. It just got worse and worse as the day got on and that's kind of what I expected. See a little black spot tusky cruising around in front of me. Now that was probably a legal fish but a little bit small for me. Let that guy grow. He'll get way bigger than that. They get massive here on the coast. When the viz has turned like this and it's not so great, I like to get down onto the bottom and I just sort of constantly just sort of turning and moving around and just having a bit of a look around because you just never know what's going to swim in. I've had plenty of fish just sort of sneak up on me, behind me, to the side of me and you just can't quite see them in that viz. Now you see me there, I've actually bumped the safety on my gun there, it probably happened during that Diamond Valley fight. Now I managed to get the safety off, which is unusual because normally once you've pulled the trigger with the safety on, you've got to unload those bands to turn it off again. But anyway, I got lucky on this day. So I put a really good shot in on this grassy emperor. Grassy emperor are like a staple fish for the line fishermen here in Mackay. They're plentiful here. You get some really, really decent ones out in the shipping channel here. This guy was a massive, well legal, and a nice little esky topper. So another trip in the Haynes ticked off on the coast. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll rip this diamond trevally out. It's not something I've ever speared and it's not something that I see many people spear. I'll um, pull it out and I'll give you a bit of a better look at it. Cool colors on it. Cool colors on its head there. I think it was about 90 something centimetres long, something like that, to the, to the fork. The trout was about 40, 48 centimetres, something like that. Yeah, not a massive trout, but still great eating trout, especially here on the coast. And to round it off, a little grassy. I was just finalising the editing of this video and I realised I haven't got any footage at all of the flesh of the Diamond Valley. So there it is. I've got to try and eat it before the flies eat it. Like there's hardly any fishy smell to it. And like what I said, my three-year-old and my six-year-old love it. They've just been smashing it. They want to eat all this now. And I said, you got to wait till I film this little bit and then you can eat it. That's it. So if you too happen to see a trevally when you're diving or even fishing, keep it, fill it at sashimi, man. It's so good, so good. All right, I'm gonna tuck into this. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Now, a big takeaway from this episode for me was to always make sure that I've got some Diamond Trevally in the freezer because that stuff is absolutely delicious. So good. If you're not already subscribed, click that little subscribe button and I'll catch us on the next episode. Cheers. What's new on it? On the very back, down the bottom. Okay, let's see what's on the back. Anything new? That's new and that's new. But we got to keep him up. So... Look at this. Check out that motor. Got that thing, everything.